are left for me to do now at the moment is to introduce tonight's uh, speaker and the presentation. So the presentation is titled uh, Slideshow, uh, Irish Railways Then and Now, Archive Photos of the 1960s and 1970s from the Tom Dowling Collection, featuring steam and diesel traction on the CIE and GNR, uh, plus contemporary views as now, and it's presented by our very well known at this stage, uh, IRS uh, photographic archivist, uh, Kieran Cooney. So I'm sure Kieran will be very familiar to all of you at this stage. So without further ado, I'm going to hand you over now to Kieran. Thanks, Shane. I'm just going to start sharing my screen now. So hopefully uh, all will be set up. So thanks everyone for coming tonight. I know we're in World Cup week at the moment, so you might be missing a match. I think it's Portugal that's playing tonight, but uh, thank you for coming and attending uh, this, this presentation, which is a compilation of images uh, recorded by the late member uh, Tom Dowland. Now, some of you may be familiar that I did a film show of Tom Dowland's 8mm cine footage. And at the start of that presentation, I showed you some still images that come from his photographic collection that was generously donated to the Society's archive by Tom's family. I'll just give you a brief introduction to Tom, uh, just to remind people who he was. So he became a member just before 1957. He was born in Dublin in 1937. And he began, from what I can estimate from his pictures, is that he began photographing Irish Railways around 1955. He started taking the cine films just a, about 10 years later in 1964. You may have seen his name in old um, IRS journals. Uh, this was because he served as the society's honorary auditor for the society's accounts until about 1999. For most of his life, Tom worked as a lab technician in the Royal College of Surgeons, and that's the building that you can see on the right hand side. It faces onto the Stevens Green uh, Lewis stop, so that's if anyone's familiar with that area of Dublin City Centre, uh, that's where Tom worked. As mentioned, he was based out in Walkinstown, and one of his favourite haunts will be quite local, Clondalkin, but he also spent some of his time on the north side of Dublin City, in and around Colester and Rohini, and the images will reflect uh, those particular areas that he focused on. There's an obituary that was published by the Society in IRS Journal 203. That's the October 2020 edition. So anyone who wants to find out a little bit more about Tom, uh, just definitely just do check out that, that obituary. Now, this presentation, Tom's still images um, as, a, as a slideshow alone, I felt might have just uh, fallen a little bit short of a presentation. So what I've done with tonight's uh, the slideshow is I've inserted some contemporary images from my own uh, photography, with many of which just coincidentally uh, are taken in the same angles and the same locations uh, as Tom recorded more than 50 or 60 years ago. So I hope that will add a bit of interest uh, to the images. It is for myself personally, this year, uh, 2022, marks 20 years of my own railway photography. So I, tar I started taking pictures around early 2002. And like many photographers, I wasn't too great uh, <laughs> at the beginning. So my, my images from that period uh, are a little bit fuzzy and 3.5 megapixel camera that I had back then. But again, I hope the quality of my later work um, will be of sufficient interest. Now, I was originally going to present this slideshow sometime next year, um, sometime maybe just before the summer of next year, but uh, I'd advanced this slideshow to tonight by about nine months. So apologies, it's still not quite perfect in some areas. Uh, so I may not have all the exact details and dates for some of the scenes that Tom recorded, but I hope um, what I will have to say about the images uh, will, will again be of interest to people. Um, so I'm going to begin appropriate enough in Dublin city centre. So this is Talbot Street, just outside Amien Street Station. Now, Tom was also an avid fan of buses, uh, particularly in later years. Uh, so, But he does have some images from his uh, early photography days. So this is about 1955, uh, again, CIE or class bus or 11. And now this bus was one of the ex Dublin uh, United Tramways Company uh, vehicles from 1938. It was with withdrawn in 1958. I know it's 1955 because you'll see the cinema in the left hand 
side there in the background has tiger in the sky so that was very uh clue to the exact date of the image now as with all images like with the slideshows that i do and with the cine footage all these images have been scanned by myself and have received uh, a lot they're 35 millimeter uh, images and they've all gone through a period of restoration but that's what the images would have looked like originally when i scanned now at last week's uh, IRS London area uh, presentation by Jim Edgar, an excellent slideshow. Uh, Jim um, mentioned an awful lot about restoration and, and enhancements done, uh, which is quite a painstaking work, but very rewarding when it's finished. But you'll see with the original image there, just an example, part of the Italian tower of Amy Street was actually missing, but I took an image from one of my own pictures and I basically just pasted it in uh, to fill that gap. <laughs> I also hope if I hadn't mentioned that, uh, maybe some people wouldn't have spotted it. I also made the pasted area a bit more grainy looking to blend with Tom's original image. Uh, but that's sort of the, the work that I've undertaken on Tom's photographic uh, images. So just to give people an idea of the work that goes into putting this material together. But let's get to the actual train. So we go inside Amiens Street and we have this lovely view of U-Class 440 number 204 Antrim side by side with CIE A-Class A25, which is in the Haute Bay. Uh, this is taken around 1959, just after the dissolution of the Great Northern Railway Board. So as you can see, CIE is stenciled on the buffer beam of number 204. Going to the end of the platforms and looking north, we have an NCC Mogul number 97. This is taken around I think, January 1960. It may be in a rugby special and the train is made up of Great Northern stock still in the original mahogany livery. And then inside Amiens Street, again, number 97, this is a rugby special from Belfast around March 1964. An interesting and not too all commonly recorded view from inside the train shed at Amiens Street. And look to the left there, the gas tank wagons. Uh, again, a feature of the railway back in the mid 1960s. Springing forward a little bit more to July 1967, we have a Great Northern BUT railcar, number 134, complete with Enterprise headboard. And here we see number 97, a lovely view captured on the turntable beside Amy Street Shed. Uh, I always think these pictures, uh, there's lots of images of engines being turned on turntables, but I love when you see the, the actual engine crews um, hard at work as Tom has captured in this shot. Uh, you'll notice also the vacuum brake hose pipe attached to the turntable, which was used uh, for the turning mechanism, but it didn't, it probably was a little bit weak, as you can see that the, the two men on either end of the table there are, are helping <laughs> move number 97. And then we see her then this evening shot around August 1963, ready to work a train back to Belfast. And this is just a contemporary view of my own taken from the same location, this time with 201 class 233 and 071 class 086. Uh, these engines, uh, well, this 86 um, had worked an RPSI mystery train from Limerick. That was on the 1st of October 2011. And 233 had come to assist um, because the engine, I think 86, might have actually failed on that particular evening. As you can see, the scene is similar, but of course the Hope Bay platform has been filled in, although the canopy and train shed are still there. But of course the fo covered footbridge um, is gone. Uh, back to the old days, this is around January 1962. We have a Great Southern and Western engine at the Great Northern side of Amien Street. Uh, I think it's number 183. It looked like number 131, but number 131 didn't have um, a superheated boiler, so it couldn't, couldn't have been that one. I believe it's probably... Um, may have come off a permanent way work and you'll notice the plow attached uh, just below the, the buffer beam. Now I've seen that being described invariably as a snow plow but I also think it was used uh, on permanent way ballast trains for spreading ballast. Uh, other engines um, that I know had that plow fitted was J15 number 250 and J19 class number 591. 
Uh, same scene, same platform, platform number two at Amy Street. And fortunately, we still can see steam at this location. Here we have Preserve Great Northern uh, V-Class compound number 85 Merlin, and that was working an RPSI Midlander steam special to Minute in March this year. Uh, back to the old days, and here we have a J5 and a K2 class engines, which I think have come away from the turntable road on the Dublin southeastern side of Amiens Street in about 1960. I know that's I think number 462, because if you see the ash pan ejector that's uh, protruding from the smoke box door. I don't think 461 didn't have this particular uh, device fitted to, to that engine. Uh, in diesel days, 17th of March 1966, B124, possibly departing on a Galway service. It's at the true platforms. You can see a CIE AC rail car that was working an IORS special uh, down to Waterford and across the Mallow Waterford line. You can see actually uh, a man is actually attending to cleaning the windows uh, on, the, on the, the body side of the, the AC rail car. And panning the camera to the left, which Tom did, he captured B174, I think shunting stock on the Great Northern side of the station. Another engine that you could see back in the 60s, still working Dublin Belfast trains, was number uh, VS class uh, number 207. This was viewed as captured in May 1964. And again, a bit more work uh, and muscle being put into turning the engine again on this occasion. And now we see uh, 207, March 1964, ready to head a train back to Belfast. It may have been the 1710 train to uh, Great Victoria Street. That was a tourist, uh, what's called a UTA tourist train. Uh, it was run, I think, for package holiday uh, deals um, with the hotel, I think, Railway Hotel uh, in Larne. Uh, so that's what I think most of these scenes that Tom captured of steam workings between Dublin and Belfast during this period would have been that particular train. Just heading away from the station, we just have a glimpse here of one of the Maybach E-Class shunters, number E430, shunting vans up by East Wall Junction. You'll see the vehicle is one of the Great Northern um, P vans, which I know was used for uh, cross-border uh, goods traffic on the Irish Northwest lines. Basically, the, the goods were concealed and didn't need to be examined by customs officials uh, when they were being in transit on those particular vans. That one, I think, is one of two that was painted um, into CIE black and orange livery when it passed the CIE after the Great Northern was dis uh, dissolved. Looking the opposite way, we have an ex Great Northern BUT rail car, renumber C708 and uh, approaching Dublin with a train from Belfast. The second vehicle you can see is in still in Great Northern livery, but the first one, as you can see, is in uh, CIE black and orange. Now, this is Tolka Bridge over the River Tolka in Fairview. We have an S Class 440 with a southbound train heading into Dublin and an X Great Northern AOR bus uh, repainted into CIA livery in about October 1960. And here is my attempt at the same scene uh, with the 11 o'clock Enterprise from Belfast, uh, 6 November 2022. Unfortunately, I can't tell you too much about the modern bus. Uh, I'm not too familiar with the contemporary uh, Dublin bus fleet. Uh, maybe someone will answer that at the end of the show. And uh, that was one of the pictures I actually deliberately went out of my way to, to, to capture for tonight's uh, show. But other images are purely coincidental. Um, here we have a view, an interesting view taken at Clontarf, an S-Class 440, number 172, working a southbound suburban train. That's the Holt Road uh, that you see in the background. Um, the building is a Great Northern, the Great Northern style building uh, on the road. That was used to house, I think, um, a district inspector based at Amiens Street, and that was his Dublin residence. But I think it may have also served um, for the, the purpose of a maybe a station master for the halt that used to exist here. So Clontarf Halt, until about 1957, existed just where the train is passing. But by 
this view I reckon is probably taken around 1959, 1960 had been dismantled. You can just also see a Great Northern AEC rail car that's in the background and it's just taking the curve towards Colester. And this is Colester itself, VS uh, 44 number 207, August 1958, Colester signal cabin in the background. Uh, this was taken again just before Colester cabin was closed. So Colester signal cabin was closed in October 1960 and colour light signals were installed between East Wall Junction and Hope Junction. Um, you'll see in the background that unusual concrete bridge. You don't often see angles uh, of it uh, like this. That's on Collins Avenue and was built uh, in the early 1950s by the Great Northern and was built to accommodate an extra pair of tracks that could be laid on either side of the running lines. Uh, but to date, of course, as we know, uh, that extra capacity hasn't been put into the line as yet. Incidentally, the view that Tom um, captured here, he's standing on the abutments of an older bridge um, that existed here, which once gave access to a quarry in Dublin, Belfast and Junction railway days. So you're talking 1840s, 1850s. The quarry actually used to exist just to the left um, of the line, uh, but the bridge itself was demolished in the early 50s. But the abutments as this view testifies, was very, very uh, handy for photographs. And this is Great Northern Rail Car, articulated Rail Car G at Colester Halt, as it was known in those days, June 1958. A brilliant capture by Tom, because I loved the, the, the children <laughs> all staring out at the back of the rail car, looking at him taking the picture. Of course, this was back uh, when Colester had uh, wooden platforms. And it's a good detailed view of the rail car and includes the white plate on the back of the, the rail car set which was used in the substituting um, for a tail lamp during daytime working. Um, a rather rural looking scene but taken in June 1958 again at Colester but looking north towards uh, Belfast so or near enough Harmonstown station will be the next station up the line. Uh, this view is, a, is, is quite changed dramatically in, in recent years. Uh, the farm yard, uh, farm buildings and yard in the background, that's all houses uh, nowadays. And the bridge, which was an unusual sort of trellis bridge, um, metal trellis bridge, uh, that's been replaced. Um, so that's my view of the same location, but taken in November 2011. Not long after a huge clearance job was done on the line uh, between Connolly Station and Hope Junction. Uh, that's a DART set uh, just working um, a greystone service from Hope. But as you'll see, when we go more than 10 years later, uh, that view from last year shows how much the, the shrubbery and trees have actually grown back uh, since 2011. Uh, that's 071 class 077 working the midday tower mines train to Dublin Port. You can see the bridge in the background had replaced the trellis bridge uh, from Great Northern days. It's now just a concrete bridge that wasn't replaced the original in about 1981. And this is a view from that bridge. It's taken at a place that's nowadays known as Venetian Hall, just at the back of and um, just just at the north end of Colester Village. That's articulate rail car G again. And it's passing by, I think, the um, up home signal for Colester. And I think the, possibly a distant signal then, um, maybe for East Wall Junction. I'm not too sure. Uh, same location, but this time an LQG class 060, number 163, working a southbound goods working to North Wall, 1958. Uh, Again, same location, but just a little bit lower down on the cutting. This is Railcar F, one of the other Great Northern articulated railcars. Uh, in the background, you can just about glimpse Harmonstown Halt uh, and the bridge on Brookwood Avenue. Now, I went back to this spot, uh, to Venetian Hall, and that's what the view looks like nowadays. Uh, so that's taken again just in October this year. Uh, Hope Debray working with one of the Japanese dart sets. And again, as with the previous shot I showed, um, it's it's a lot more overgrown nowadays. But 
back to September 1959. This is number 207, working a northbound train, taking, uh, judging by that light, taking some time in the later evening. Uh, a little bit higher up now, this is CIEA class A27, working a train of UTA stock from Dublin to Belfast. And this view, actually, if you look very carefully on A27, you can see the wind deflector plates that were fitted just either side of the, just below the uh, electric train staff um, apparatus. Uh, it was used to re reduce turbulence uh, when the ETS snatcher was in use. You'll also notice the, 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 the chrome handrails, uh, which this engine received as part of a spruce up when it worked at uh, uh, a special from from Dublin to Cork uh, that was for the Patrician Congress on the 20th of June 1961. Um, and this is the 1964 steam rail tour, a joint one between the ORS, CTS, the SLS and the IORS. And it's again number 207 working the return leg of the trip back to Belfast. Uh, you can see the engine and the, the vehicle immediately behind the engine there. That's uh, a six wheel uh, Great Southern and Western uh, van number 1077, painted as it was in those days in black and, and orange livery. I think it was one of the few uh, six wheel carriages to receive uh, the, the black and orange. And that's a view of the same location, this time with uh, retro, as in retro from the late 1980s, 071 class livery and uh, number 073, working the empty 1400 train to tire mines, May 2021. And this is a place called Ennefort, just before Heaney, and we have a southbound suburban train hauled by Great Northern 440 and another S-Class number 197, about July 1959. And that's the same view as uh, more or less today that was taken back in April 2016. 075 working a permanent way spoil train from Hope Junction to Harmonstown. That was taken around the bank holiday, uh, or not a bank holiday, but taken around the usual weekend engineering works that place, takes place uh, around April every year on the Great Northern Main Line. Um, I say Tom, I say, did turn his camera towards buses. So we have a view on the whole road here at Rohini. Great Northern AOR 290 uh, is the bus being pictured. August 1959. Now, the bus is in Great Northern livery, um, but it had passed to CIE uh, company service. And you'll see on the body side, the crest, the Great Northern crest has actually been removed. Uh, but of course, it's still still in the, the navy and cream of the Great Northern. I put this picture um, up on Twitter at uh, just a couple of weeks ago and someone uh, pointed out uh, and I didn't spot it at the time but look at the the, the woman up on the, the the upper deck with her high heels and um, <laughs> I don't know now maybe yeah she she probably has her legs up there but it's it's, it's a funny kind of shot I hadn't spotted it at all a great capture by Tom I Having come across this print, I did go to this location myself and try and recreate it. And um, that was back in April 2021. And we have a Dublin bus again. More or less, it hasn't, hasn't really changed all that much. But you'll see the sign at the times there wear a face cover and people are wearing their face masks. So it's hopefully that in years to come, that, that would date that picture. And back to trains, and this is Rohini. Uh, v class compound number 85. We saw that earlier on an RPSI train at Connolly. This is June 1959, working a train from Belfast to Dublin. And um, again, just another glimpse of a bus, this time in Rohini Village. This is X Great Northern AO 294. And this particular vehicle, as you can see, it has been repainted into CIE livery with the Flying Snail logo. And Ho Junction, uh, Great Northern QG Class 060, number 153, working a northbound suburban train in April 1960. Ho Junction signal cabin, as you can see in the background, that's long gone. That was demolished uh, about 1983, once the DART resignaling scheme uh, came on board. 
And this time a rail car. This is a Great Northern BUT rail car, almost brand new, number 903, August 1958. Tom has captured it working a southbound service from Belfast and diverging in the foreground. That's the branch line to Holt. And this is a better view of the junction, this time with X Great Northern AC rail car, we number C613 n about not March 1961. As you can see, back then the, the whole junction was extremely rural looking. I say it has, it's completely changed nowadays. It's all uh, suburban houses and um and industrial estates and that's my view taken in may 2014 and um, that's 071 class 074 working light engine from Holt. Um, i had worked um rpsi stock to Holt, and which were going to be steam hauled back to dublin for the saint canis rail tour And uh, Tom just captures a couple of views of the Hill of Hope tram just before close in May 1959. Here's tram number seven. I think it's about to head off up to, to the summit um, and then down back around to descending the summit down to Sutton. Uh, Hope station, you can see in the background and the gate on the left that gave you direct access uh, onto the platforms at Hope station. And this is the summit itself, also known as the Hill of Hoat, tram number 70 in May 1959. Uh, but back to the main line and a bit more or less just north of Hoat Junction. Uh, here we see number 85 again, but July 1959 again is taken after the Great Northern Railway Board had been dissolved. And you can see CIE has been stenciled on the buff of the green, and as well as the, the, the Great Northern uh, carriages as well. I think that's a clerestory roof looking carriage uh, that's immediately behind 85. This view was captured at, at a foot crossing uh, that existed between Hoke Junction and Baldoyle, but it's long gone. Although the footpath, I think, is still exists, although it's quite, quite overgrown nowadays. And that will be the nearest equivalent view that, that I could get. That's the 11 o'clock from from, Bel uh, from Dublin to Belfast passing just at the end of the platforms at Hope Junction, 3rd of February 2016. Uh, the, the Enterprise set, you can see, it's quite clean looking. It's not too long having re-entered service uh, in that new uh, livery uh, the, with the raspberry livery, uh, raspberry ripple, I think someone has called it or christened it. Uh, this is the road bridge at Baldoyle, and we have Great Northern Fourth Road number 173 working a southbound train, probably from Drogheda, judging by the stock uh, on it, right September 1959. This is where um, a formerly a station did exist in Dublin, uh, uh, Dublin and Drogheda railway days uh, for a very short period between 1844 and 1846. Um, there was a railway, I think their railway cottages was, was also uh, cited here, which you can see just behind B192. So this view is captured from the road bridge, but looking south towards Dublin, and that's a northbound train heading to Belfast of, with CIE stock. And that was taken in February 1967. Uh, this is my view, uh, this time with 071 class 083, heading uh, the northbound uh, Sperry uh, track recording train, heading from Northwall to Dundalk, 24th September 2015. Uh, the railway cottage uh, is long gone now, I think it was demolished uh, probably nearly 40 years ago at this stage. Um, You'll see in the background the, the well-known landmark of the, the uh, Pigeon House uh, ESB chimneys, uh, the pool bag chimneys just on the horizon. Uh, this is looking the opposite way at Baldoyle. And if we have what is now the preserved uh, S-Class 440 number 171 sleeve gullion working a southbound train in August 1959. And I too have uh, preserved uh, Great Northern 440 at this spot, uh, but of course it's number 85, and that's working a steam enterprise, uh, 25th of set F September 2015. So just a contrast, just to see how much in the past 15 years, maybe, that's only this development in the past 15 years have all been built up, but until about 20 years ago, this area of Baldoy was still quite rural looking. Um, in the background is, Clon Griffin Station. 
Uh, another view just with the road bridge at Belt Oil, AC Rail Car 2606 and 2607, heading a northbound train, January 1968. Oh, and this is an accommodation bridge at Port Marnock. Uh, we have another NCC engine, but this time it's 264 tank number 56, March 1965. And that bridge still exists, although it's no longer an arch. It was rebuilt for the Dart electrification in about uh, 2001, I think, 2000, 2001. So here we have 071 class 073 working the 920 tower mines to Dublin Port, October 2022. And uh, this is Port Marnock Station, ES 440 number 59, July 1959. I think this was, this was one of the, the VS engines um, that passed to the UTA, it was formerly number 210. Um, it was overhauled in Dundalk in January 1959, so it looks quite smart looking um, in, in this view that Tom captured. This is Malahide Viaduct, um, A22, working a permanent way bridge panel train by January 1967. So this was taken at the time when the, the bridge spanning the Broad Meadow Estuary north of Malahide was being replaced with uh, concrete um, decking. Dunna Bay, this time LQG class 060 number 111, heading a southbound goods working August 1958. Looks like taken uh, in the evening time. Um, some years later, Tom, Tom captured in February 1970 an AC rail car set 2631 working a suburban train from Drogheda. I think the siding that you can just see towards the rear of the rail car um, in great northern days and I think until the late 1960s, some services um, terminated at Dunabate and they actually used that siding. Uh, to, to um, be parked out of the way mainline trains before heading back to Dublin City. Uh, Dunabate, um, again, it's one of these station buildings haven't all changed that much, although there's a new footbridge. But uh, again, it's one of the satellite towns for Dublin. And here we have a permanent way hob train, high output ballast train, platinum to North Wall, hauled by Enterprise Delivery uh, Engine number 207, April 2021. Um, the used to be until I think about 20 years ago, uh, Dublin bus services used to call into the station uh, forecourt at Dunabate. And here in February 1970, Tom has captured, um, I think it's a 4924 uh, in this view. I think it may have been working the 33. B bus route, which operated between Swords, Dunabate, and Port Ran. You can see Port Ran is one of the destinations um, on the destination blind. This is Drada, February 1966, a southbound train headed by two GMs, uh, B158, uh, sorry, 158 and one, that should be 174. Uh, Drada has changed quite a lot since the, the rail car depot was put, installed on the, the upside of the line. And this view taken in August 2015 shows an actual dart set um, in the background that had been brought up to Drada for wheel wheel tuning in the depot. 074 is actually running around the, the weed spray train, which you can also see in the background. Um, just back to the old days, this is February 1966, and a nice view of Drogheda South Signal Cabin would be 148 arriving in Drogheda from the Dublin direction with a string of uh, goods fans. Uh, we've seen this engine quite a bit again, it's number 207. This time Tom captured it at the north end of Drogheda Station, May 1964. And that's my view of the Enterprise uh, at Rahada Station, 1630 Belfast Dublin Enterprise working 13th of April 2014. And you can see the water crane um, still exists at this location. I'm not too sure if it's still operational though.
Now, a classic view of Bow Park. Now, Jim Edgar had a lovely picture last week of Bow Park. And this is a similar nice view uh, that Tom has captured. So for the second time uh, in as many weeks, uh, we're back at Bow Park on the Great Northern branch line to Navan. That's A21 working at uh, the Kings Court Navin Gypsum Goods. So the Gypsum, you can just about, Gypsum, a uh, laden Gypsum wagons, you can just about see at the rear of the train, but all the goods vans, uh, A21 would have picked them up in Navin Station. Um, I think Bow Park Cabin closed around not, not long after 1958 when the, the, the passing loop was removed, uh, when passenger services between Drogheda, Navin and Old Castle uh, ceased. Um, that's my view of Bow Park, and here we have retro livery locomotive 071, repainted in its delivered uh, livery of 1976, working the 1220 Tower Mines Dublin Port Service, June 2018. Of course, cabin unfortunately is long gone now. There's another view of Bow Park, Railcar 2509. Ex Sligo Leitrim, uh, Northern Counties rail car, uh, working in Navin to Kings Court IRS special, July 1966. And this was the special uh, having arrived into Kings Court. And you can see some ex Great Northern um, uh, hopper wagons on the left that were used for the gypsum traffic. Passenger services uh, to Kings Court had ceased as long as ago as 1947. Um, this is my most recent view of King's Court taken uh, last year and in August 2021. Um, although the track still survives, it is partially being lifted at, at present to be turned into a greenway. Um, you can see in this view, uh, the track uh, is totally overgrown now. Uh, the station building, though, has been extended and is now, uh, I think it's a, it's now the, the, uh, operated as a... Um, a fitness or a gym center, I think now. The last train to King's Court ran in summer 2002, and that was the weed sprayer, but I haven't seen any traffic since then. And uh, just a view of Navin Station, GAA special from Dublin, March 1968, hauled by B158. And Navin Station hasn't changed all that much. Uh, this view from May 2018 uh, with the 1400 Dublin to Tara Mines empty uh, ore train. Uh, because signal cabin in the background, that of course is the last Great Northern signal cabin still in operation uh, to this day. Uh, this is A51 uh, working the King's Court to Navin Gypsum train, June 1966, passing through Gibbstown. So we're just slightly again, we're slightly off Great Northern Territory and onto Midland Great Western uh, metals. And that's my view of Gibbstown, April 2013. Now I've seen a picture taken last week of this location and the track has been lifted now and it's now a tarmac surface uh, for, uh, for the Greenway. And this is A51, recorded just a little bit later, shunting its gypsum train in Navan. And no doubt it will pick up some, some of the wagons uh, in Navan Goods Yard. And you can see how the traffic, goods traffic back, back then was quite healthy, uh, judging from how occupied the sidings are. Uh, back at Rada, this is number 207, working that tourist train that I mentioned at the beginning of the slideshow, May 1964. And this is another, this is the BUT rail car set we saw earlier, but this time it's working a three piece set, C708N, passing Drogheda North signal cabin. So we saw the south cabin earlier, but this is the north one. And this is the first member of the A class, A1, in black and orange livery, recorded outside the engine shed at Drogheda, May 1965. And you can see inside the engine shed, relatively new um, CIE cement bubbles. Uh, these would have been working from the Boyne Road uh, cement factory on the north side of Drogheda, on the north side of the River Boyne. That's the Boyne Viaduct. And just a reminder what bubble cement trains look like back, back crossing Dr the, the Boyne Viaduct in Drogheda in May 1966. And this view that Tom captured, you can see the brake fan at the rear of the train uh, back in the 60s, uh, the, these 
bulk uh, cement workings always had a brake van for the guard uh, but they were dispensed with and then the guard traveled i think with the driver um from the 1970s onwards and uh, that's my view of the Boyne viaduct uh a april 2014 uh the preserved uh k2 class 260 number 461 working in rpsi Boyne special to dundalk now when I first saw this picture, I thought it was actually the Balnacorti uh, branch down in Dungarvan, but it's not. It's the Boyne Road branch uh, that I mentioned serving the cement factory uh, north of Drada. We have B164 with a Foynes Drada oil train and it's propelling oil tanks to the oil terminal just outside the cement factory, October 1966. And I recorded similar view back in September 2005 and um, the branch has largely been disused since the mid 1980s and only a short stub was used for ballast workings until about the, the, the mid 1990s during the relaying of the Dublin Belfast line. The track still exists uh, serving the, the oil terminal at Boyne Road and again another view from 2006. Uh, Drummond Junction UT rail car, 25th July 1959. This was taken on the occasion of an IRS special visiting the RD branch. Uh, you can see that rail car is in Great Northern livery, but it has the UTA crest on the front. And then another uh, DUT rail car, but this one is the one that passed the CIE and it's in the CIE green livery. Again, 25th July 1959, and that's working a southbound train to Dublin. There's barely a trace left of Drummond Junction. This view, July 2011, has a 2800 uh, rail car set heading north to Dundalk. Uh, you can just about see the RD branch platform through the shrub, shrub, uh, trees and shrubs on the left. Uh, part of the up platform is also visible, but um, all of the station buildings um, have long since disappeared now. Although the signal cabin, I think, is preserved um, somewhere. I think it's near Slane. The signal cabin was relocated yet yeah, to, to a farm or to a greenfield site in Slane. I haven't quite found the exact location of it yet. This is Dundalk at uh, number 207, September 1964, uh, taking water before departing north to Belfast. And this view is taken up around Mount Pleasant in the border area, a Grosvenor Road to Capra bulk cement train. So working from Belfast to Dublin of the CIE bubble cement wagons, May 1966, hauled by A50. Now, I'm afraid that Tom did record scenes north of the border, but uh, to fit all of that, into tonight's presentation, I think we'd probably go over time. So we might leave that for another night, but uh, they would include the views of Warren Point Branch and the Dairy Road. So I hope people aren't too disappointed that we aren't visiting those occasions uh, on this occasion. But I'm going to bring you back to Dublin's Amiens Street Station for this view of B135. And we're going to take a journey now on Midland Great Western Metals. Uh, and we'll also take in the line to Sligo, Galway and the Loch Ray Branch. Uh, interesting thing about B135 is looking quite fresh looking in this shot uh, from July 1964. This engine was the only uh, 121 class to be repainted in its original livery after delivery. So it's in the grey and yellow uh, livery. You can see how smart looking, but uh, all the other engines of the 121 class during the 60s, they all got repainted um, into the black and orange livery. And now we're descending uh, the link line from Amiens Street to the Midland Great Western's Liffey branch at Newcomen Bridge Junction. This is a CIE AEC rail car set 2623 crossing the Royal Canal uh, lifting bridge, January 1966. I think this may have been a working, um, an afternoon working to um, Sligo. I believe the line to Drumcondra was closed for permanent way work because if you look very carefully, you can actually see a permanent way van and some flat wagons uh, on the main line. And you can also see uh, the former uh, West Road signal cabin that's long gone. That's my view 
of the same location at Newcombe Bridge Junction. The bridge was replaced about 20 years ago by a much more modern structure. That's 201 class 222 working at Connolly to Docklands driver training on the morning of 30th of January 2022. Uh, Liffey Junction now. So we've come off the Liffey branch and this is B135 working at Dublin Galway service. January 1963, the points work that you see in the foreground, that's the turnout for the uh, siding serving the North City Mills branch. In the background, you can see uh, Glasnevin Cemetery. Uh, Tom recaptured uh, CI steam in action. This is J26 class 060 number 558 working the Liffey Junction pilot uh, train. So that was an engine that would have been rostered to work goods from Northwall up to Liffey Junction to Broadstone maybe and serving the North City Mills branch I mentioned in the evening time. The background is Liffey Junction Signal Cabin and the water tower that you see in the background, that still exists today. Uh, you can see also just a good view um, also of not only uh, 558, but also um, I think Great Southern and Western Horse Box. Uh, this is Broadstone Shed, May 1956, with steam at a roofless uh, roundhouse as it was back in those days at Broadstone. At this, by this time, of course, uh, Broadstone was being shared with the CIE uh, bus fleet, and we have CIE single decker uh, number T1. I think that that uh, that particular um, bus it dated, I think, from the 1930s. Yeah, I think it was an ex uh, Great Southern Railway bus from 1934. Um, it was withdrawn in November 1958. Uh, it was used as a tow car, actually, in later years. Back to Liffey Junction. This is Dublin Sligo working, B135, April 1965. And again, this train is just coming off the Liffey branch with glass, the round tower glass in Evans Cemetery, just visible in the left background. And there's been a lot of changes to Liffey Junction uh, in recent years. Uh, you can just about see the water tower in the background. The Broadstone line used to continue straight ahead. But at this time in May 2015, it was being used, uh, being repurposed for the Lewis uh, line into the city centre. So that's the uh, Green Line extension. That's 088 working the PWD Sperry train from Northwall to Longford, May 2015, and I recorded the same view in October 2020, and same train, Sperry train, Northwall to Longford with 072, but look at the dramatic changes in the background with the brand new Lewis Terminus and the depot, uh, as well as I think some of the, the, the rebuildings as well have uh, been re repurposed into uh, the industrial buildings that you saw in the previous view have been repurposed into um, houses and apartments now. This is Riley's Bridge, CIE A40, working the 1940 Northwall to Sligo Goods. Uh, you can just see the oil tank wagons in Marshall in the middle of the train. So this is an easy way to identify it as a Sligo bound working. Of course, Sligo uh, traffic of SO oil from Sligo ceased around 2005, 2006. This year from April 1965, uh, Riley's Bridge crossing, I'm told, had featured the widest uh, level crossing gates. And it wasn't the widest level crossing. I think that went to Dungarvan, uh, to the causeway crossing at Dungarvan, but certainly the gates were one of the longest uh, on the CIE system. Uh, my view captures the preserve number 461, working the RPSI Santa Special to Minute. 30th November 2014 and you can see the brand new road bridge that was being built to replace this level crossing. Uh, that's a bus just crossing over the old canal bridge at Riley's Bridge, something that doesn't happen nowadays because the level crossing has been replaced altogether. Uh, so we have coming from the Sligo direction of Mullingar to Northwall uh, CWR train 14th of May 2021 and you can see the bridge from which the bus passed over, that's just visible to the right of the picture. But you can see the road has been torn up and the crossing removed. And that's 
Pellettstown station under construction in the background. This is Ashtown. It could be nearly mistaken for Clonsilla, but no, it's Ashtown Signal Cabin, B121, working at Dublin Galway service, January 1964. Um, Ashtown Signal Cabin, of course, that didn't, it's Clonsilla, well, Clonsilla Signal Cabin still exists. Ashtown um, was demolished as long ago as October 1967. We have Clonsilla itself. Now, B129, Dublin Galway service, April 1963. And you see Tom expertly captured the snatcher apparatus uh, being exchanged from the line side uh, to the cab side of B129. An evening goes uh, recorded from the windows of the signal cabin at Clonsilla, May 1964, A20. And you can see the signal man handing up uh, the electric uh, the electric train staff to the driver before he proceeds on to Minute. The tank that you see just behind A20, that looks like one of the CIE um, I think it's oil oil tanks that were used for local fuel. This is leak slip running alongside the, the Royal Canal, Dublin Galway night mail taken in the evening time, June 1968, B127. You can see the, the, the four wheel vans, the TPO, etc. on this train. That's my view. Same location running alongside the Royal Canal, uh, double track now between Consil and Minute, which was uh, reinstated in 2000 and 2001, 3rd of December 2011, an RPSI Santa special. A leak slip from the north, uh, from the Minute end of the station. Again, 121 class leader, B121, January 1963, with an up train to Dublin. Made up. Look at the assortment of carriages actually on that train. Uh, the four wheel heating van, tin van. Uh, I think there's a CIE uh, laminar stock in there. Um, all, all sorts of stock you would have gotten back in the 19, early 1960s. Uh, this is Jackson's Bridge, just beyond Manute, CIE A31, North Walsh, Sligo Goods, May 1966. And again, you can see the SO oil tanks just marshaled at the rear of the train. I think there's proposals to build uh, the new Dart Depot at this location uh, for the electrification of the line between Dublin and Manute. Carrick on Shannon. B-173 and CIE AC Railcar 2628, June 1967, and two up and down Saigo trains uh, crossing at the station. This is Sligo Station. Here we have B-173 again, and there's now another AC Railcar set, 2609. And a view again, this time more muscle power, uh, but this time with diesel. And this is B126, July 1965, being turned on the turntable at Sligo before working a train back to Dublin. I think the driver there doesn't, <laughs> I think they might be IRS members uh, assisting in this operation, but the driver is quite content to let them uh, do all the turning. Uh, back to steam days, however, and Tom records J19 class 060 number 603 on the turntable at Loch Ray, September 1961. And this is the Loch Ray branch train at Loch Ray itself, number 603, preparing to depart back to a time. And the station gut uh, slate seem to be uh, receiving attention in this view. You can see the man, two men up a ladder attending to the roof of the station building. As usual, a very mixed uh, train as it was on the Loch Ray branch. Open wagons, cattle wagon, vans, um, a tin van um, and a passenger carriage. And here is Jane 19, number 603, departing Loch Ray, uh, 1520 to a time. And again, September 1961, passing the small signal cabin at Loch Ray. In diesel days, it was C class C218, and that's working to 1205 to Loch Ray, which Tom has captured at a time and junction, June 1964. 
I recorded the same location uh, 20 years 20 years ago, August 2002, um, at the Loch Ray branch. Of course, that closed in, I think, November 1975. Uh, so long gone by this stage it was the track was lifted around 1988-89 and um, a well-known landmark on the Loch Ray branch is the preserved on Sandal Station this is a view from 2008 and here's Tom's view of the the branch train from a time and this time with C227 June 1968 and this is two and eight having arrived into Loch Ray from a time and back to June 1964. In later years, they had a carriage, of course, that had the, I think Jim Edgar explained this quite well. They had a carriage that was used uh, with uh, onboard uh, storage heaters uh, inside the carriage. But back then in June 1964, uh, they just usually had um, a four wheel heating van uh, attached to the passenger accommodation. Loch Ray, that was past my view, August 2002. And unfortunately, I think the station building still remains derelict to this day. Uh, one of the other CIE diesel classes you can see on the Loch Ray branch was the G class. This is G613, 1205 Loch Ray, June 1966, with just a single carriage. And this is April 1964, G613, uh, shunted into the cattle dock at Loch Ray because we had on this particular day, 4th of April 1964, AEC rail cars 2639 and 2634 working Northern Ireland Railway Society's Joint Committee uh, rail tour from Belfast. Um, now, they originally travelled down from Belfast with 207 Boeing, uh, so that was at steam working, but um, they weren't able to get steam working on the Midland metals. So this rail car substituted uh, on this part of the tour. And that's the same rail tour, this time uh, with a photo stop at the intermediate station at Dun Sandal. Um, just going to bring you back to North Wall. I know we'll be taking a break fairly soon, but we'll just head down the Dublin Cork line just in the next couple of minutes. Uh, again, we're back to buses, and this is Great Northern uh, Double Decker 287, um, an AEC uh, Regent bus built 1947, uh, withdrawn December 1960. I think this may have been recorded in the Abercorn Road area of North Wall, uh, where the Great Northern had a bus depot. Um, staying in North Wall area, um, this is CIE B149, shunting flat wagons with containers alongside Maybach shunters E431, 413, 425, February 1969. Um, I'm afraid it's impossible to really to get this view nowadays because the whole area around the Point Depot or the Tree Arena, as it's now called, has been totally redeveloped um, into apartments, office blocks, etc. Um, this is down opposite the Midland Yard in North Wall, but this area ser formerly served the London and North Western Railway uh, terminus in North Wall. We have Woolwich Mogul number 376, shunting three open wagons, uh, wooden ones, August 1961. Looking over the bridge the opposite way, these views were recorded on Sherrill Street, and we have CIE Maybach shunter E409, August 1961. Now, I know it's taken from Sheriff Street Bridge because to the left, you can see the water tower, uh, the London Northwestern Railway style water tower uh, that's visible. And that's my view of the same location. But November 2010, um, 071 class 087 was stabled in the sidings here on a permanent way spoil train. Although in this view, it seems the wagons seem to be loaded with um, concrete sleepers, redundant concrete sleepers. But uh, signal cabin in the background, that's Church Road cabin, and that has closed. And the sidings you see here have all been lifted now. And um, taking the link line 
around towards Kingsbridge or Euston, that's called. This is Claude Road from Condra, U class 4 for own number 199, working at Boston Sidings to Inchicore Transfer, July 1962. Uh, from Condra Station, uh, it will be sighted just towards the rear of the train nowadays. An interesting train, you must say, uh, open wagons, brake van, gas tank wagon, uh, an AEC rail car, uh, a power car in black and orange livery and a four wheel van. Uh, so it just shows you that virtually run any combination on, on your model railway of Irish railways. My view, uh, this is 071 class 076, working an empty stock transfer to Inchicore following the RPSI Kilkenny Mystery Train, July 2011. So it's approaching Claude Road. The road in the foreground is St. Brendan's Road. Passing Glass Nevin Junction now, CIE A10, with a coastal defence train, June 1966. You can see the rocks all loaded onto the flat wagon. So that would have been heading down, I think, to the coastal section on the Dublin Southeastern at Bally, uh, Bally Gannon. This is Cabra. Sulzer locomotive B114, one of the two original Sulzer engines, working a north wall to Island Bridge goods transfer, February 1968. And in the background, you can see the Capra cement terminal with lorries and cement bubbles. I think during this period, it may have been also used for cattle traffic because you can see there are some cattle vans uh, in the background. You'll also see towards the rear of b 114 uh, 114's train, you can see uh, Maybach Shunter. That probably would have given the train some assistance uh, from the north wall direction. Um, my view, July 2014, this is 073 working the 930 north wall Balna liner train. Uh, Cabra Cement depot closed in 1999 and this view captured the site when it was totally overgrown and the sidings um, were lifted. I, I'm afraid I don't have a contemporary view but if you were to see the view nowadays uh, the, the terminal, this former terminal is now totally redeveloped into, into apartments. This is Dublin Euston. E413, March 1967. I mean, how many people captured an E-class under the train shed um, at Euston Station? Again, it's not the most glamorous engines, but certainly it's most, I it mean, it must be one of the few images I've seen that have been recorded in everyday sight uh, at the time, but uh, it was seldom pictured. But Tom has this shot here, classic view. Um, it's a great picture showing a lot of the passengers and sundries being unloaded from the van. Uh, steam on St. John's Road. This is a uh, 040 saddle tank number two, May 1965, working from the St. James's Gate Guinness Brewery. Again, just taken before closure. Again, a goods working uh, of train from the St. James's Guinness Brewery, heading along St. John's Road before entering the yard at Kingsbridge again, May 1965. Of course, nowadays it's a, almost like a dual carriageway nowadays, much, much more busier. They couldn't run something like this. Um, we'll continue. I know, um, I know Shane will be anxious to take, take a break probably in the next few minutes, but we'll just continue. I think another five more minutes and we will have reached a halfway point of the slideshow and um, which is actually Lucan station. And um, this is my view just of an Airlink bus, February 2009, outside Houston Station. But Tom also captured the original uh, bus link or airport specials that they were known. April 1962, CIE 4545. This was in Cahill Brewer Street uh, in the city centre. Uh, I think there was five of these buses built. And uh, again, this is the same location. Again, these buses, they were liveried in Aer Lingus livery. But I think they were converted back to those conventional buses um, in the late 1960s. So we're going to head down the main line to Clondalkin, which is Tom's local area, and then we'll pause for a break at Lucan. Here we have B124, March 1964, working a down train from Dublin. My view is looking in the opposite direction. A uh, permanent way train from Port Arlington to North Wall of Spoil Wagons, 075, April 2016. So 
just think of this image in your mind. And then when you see Tom's view taken from ground level back in May 1965, A46 with an up goods train. Now, this goods train, it's like a motor train. It's made up um, of cars on flat wagons, as you can see. There's also a van there and there's some um, flat wagons with containers on it, which may have contained car parts. Um, but uh, maybe someone can tell us what the cars on the flat wagons are. I'm normally quite good with my vintage cars, but I haven't quite recognized or identified those particular models. Not long re-engined uh, from its cross the engine days to GM uh, General Motors says A59 or January 1969 southbound goods train, which includes some cattle wagons uh, in the formation. Uh, this is one of my favorite views actually of tonight's um, show, which Tom has captured. Um, B163 working the Inchicore trial train, March 1968, taken at Kisho Bridge. And the train is made up of the Mogul um, wagons, zinc Mogul wagons, which would be working from silver mines to foins they hadn't entered traffic at this particular point uh, so they're on trial and this train would normally have worked i think the salons or port leash and back again a uh, double-headed a-class goods train uh, a15 a17 down goods again taken near luke january 1965 and I think the last image we'll see before we break, uh, again, taken near Lucan Station, B184, uh, not too long, uh, X Works, Foyne Sadrada oil train, February 1966. So that train would have been working all the way up to the cement factory at Boyne Road, which we saw earlier. And now we're at just beyond Lucan Station, B-153 with an up train to Dublin, June 1966. And it's passing the, one of the original mile posts, as you can see on the left, six and a half miles measured from King's Bridge. This is Lucan Station itself, B-181, passing through a very wintry scene, November 1968. Again, an up train to Dublin. My view shows the station largely vanished in um, March 2007. The really only remains left of the station really nowadays are the down, the retaining wall, the down platform. There's a view of uh, 201 class 214 working an up train. You can see the work on installing the extra pair of tracks between Dublin and Dublin Euston and Hazel Hatch. Back to 1960s, December 1968, an up train hauled by Sulzer B104, consisting mainly of cattle wagons. Lucan again, this time another goes working, hauled by an A-class, this time A9, July 1966. The siding you can see in the left foreground, that served um, the narrow gauge system that was used during the construction of the nearby Baldono uh, aerodrome. Uh, the siding, though, lasted many years afterwards. In fact, right until uh, Luke and Signal Cabin closed. Uh, I think that closed in 19, November 1973, actually. And that's what the view more or less of Lucan is nowadays, although this view is looking back towards Dublin. 086 working uh, a down train of permanent way panels to Port Leash, February 2016. The former um, down platform will be kind of just in the foreground area. But as you can see here, the four tracks have totally obliterated the former station site. Stack Omni Bridge, B128, working the up radio train from Killarney, August 1965. The well-known landmark of the barn is in the background, and that barn still exists today, as this view testifies, Stack Omni Bridge 079 with the Belmont Hibernian train from Bagnall's Town, 2nd July 2018. Unfortunately, as we all know, the Belmont train uh, no longer runs in Ireland. So although the barn is still there, the train uh, itself no longer runs. And um, it was actually uh, the 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 barn structure originally, if you look at the OS maps, is, uh, is marked as a lime kiln. And for many years, actually had uh, trees growing out of the top section of it. 
approaching Hazel Hatch, which is the next station down from Lucan, B234 with the Dublin Limerick train, December 1965. Now, B234 and its sister engine, B233, these were the two C class engines that were re engined with Maybach engines from their original Crossley engines. Uh, this view of Hazel Hatch, taken in July 2016, shows how much the location has changed. This time, the 920 North Wall Balna IWT liner, with the new pair of up and down lines installed to the left. But back to June 1973, A22R, working a southbound train, which the first uh, few wagons um, are the the uh, short-lived back-to-back fertilizer wagons. And these were superseded by uh, the, fer- the bogey fertilizer van. So they had a very short life period. A Cabra to Limerick bulk cement working, December 1965 with A4. And looking the opposite way towards Hazel at station, the other re-engine C-class, B233, working an up train from Limerick, December 1966. And as this view shows, again, the, the extra pair of tracks have made dramatic changes to Hazel Hatch Station, 085, with the A30 Balna to North Wall Liner, May 2016. This is recorded just south of Hazel Hatch Station, A57 with a down goods, June 1966. You can see the A57 seems to have received um, a bit of damage to its uh, front, as you can see just below the windows. Straffan, uh, a station a bit like Lucan South that's long since vanished, B149 and B147, an up train to Dublin, April 1966. Um, Straffan closed uh, also in November 1973. And this is Salons, B169 and B122, both working up trains June 1965 with Salons North signal cabin to the left. Uh, B169 has been looped to be overtaken by B122, but I'm not too sure the exact workings of these two up trains. Salons, A21, March 1966, a long southbound goods train from Dublin. And this footbridge here is very distinct of having the, the portholes in it, covered over but uh, portholes. Again, another view of Salons, B183, an up train, March 1967. Of course, uh, Salons station reopened for commuter traffic in late 19, mid 1990s, I think 1994, 95. And here we see the 925 Cork to Dublin train passing through in June 2010. And this is B121, the class leader, 1230 Kingsbridge to Cork perishable train. I think this was a train that stopped at nearly all the wayside stations uh, between Dublin and Cork, uh, March 1968. And the train is passing the South Signal Cabin. In the background, you can see the former carriage shed uh, that was used um, often to store the, the stock of the Tullo branch train, uh, but by this time, the late 1960s, it was used to restore um, carriages that had been withdrawn or are waiting scrapping. Silent South gets signal cabin again in this view, this time an up train B188 and B175, January 1967, and passing one of those mileposts, milepost 18, with the the turnout you can see beside the signal cabin, that was the former uh, branch line to Nace and Tullow. This is Kildare, BS440 number 209 with the Inchicore trial train, February 1961. Again, made up a, an assortment of stock, including a six wheeler. Uh, my view of Kildare was taken recently in August 2022. A uh, permanent way steel train from Bellevue to Port Leash, hauled by locomotive 216, which is in the Belmont Hibernian livery. Cherryville Junction, an up permanent way ballast train, hauled by J15 number 162, Liz Duff to Kildare, June 1961. Uh, 
my view also Cherryville shows a ballast train this time from Carlo to Port Leash 18th of September 2009 uh, hauled by 084 and the cabin at um, Cherryville Junction that's that has been closed um, since the mid 1970s when it was replaced by the CTC recycling scheme but it still survives um, to this day the ballast hoppers, though, they've since been replaced by the, the Hobbs wagons that we saw at Dunabate. This is Solzer engine B109, which Tom captured leaving. I think it's leaving um, Port Arlington. I did think it might be the north end of Salins, but I think it's I think it's Port Arlington. July 1959. It's an example that shows how weathered the original silver, CIE silver livery, uh, could get. Uh, of course, these these engines then will be repainted into the green green livery, and then later black or black and orange livery. And talking of liveries, this is A twenty eight. It's working the five thirty Limerick Junction to Kingsbridge Rambler goods. And so this again was another one of these trains that stopped at all wayside stations to collect, drop off or collect wagons en route to Dublin. Uh, this view, June nineteen sixty six. Um, A28, as you can see, this particular A-class was released into traffic uh, in all over black livery, but you can see it didn't have any um, white uh, lining um, like above the, the, the window area or the, above on the front. Um, it's certainly it's not concealed by dirt. You can clearly see that it's, it's totally black. I like to call it um, a stealth livery <laughs> if, if it was to give it a name. Um, so heading then further south towards Cork, this is AC Railcar 2644, July 1965, passing the wayside station at this stuff. Um, Turla Sugarby factory now, and this is where many of the Deutz engines uh, ended their, their careers. G616, November 1971. Now the Sugar Bee Factory at Turles that closed in 1988-89 and workings then were transferred to Mallow Sugar Factory. My view of the Bee Factory opposed from Tom's was taken in July 2009. Now a lot of the buildings still survive from the Sugar Bee days uh, but they've been repurposed into private businesses. This is Ennis Junction, just outside Limerick, a CIE AC railcar working a Rosslare Harbour bound service, February 1965. This was a very dangerous level crossing, I believe, that was at Ennis Junction and was on an, uh, right angles and across uh, three running lines, the up and down line from Kilonan Junction, as well as the the line, the, west, uh, the Western Rail Corridor coming in from the Ennis direction. This is Limerick Check, just getting nearer to Limerick Station now. B233, working a Dublin bound train, February 1967. And looking the opposite way, at Limerick Check, A31, with a cab rat to Limerick bulk cement train, September 1969. Uh, passing Limerick check signal cabin is B144, a Dublin Limerick uh, Sarshall train, as it was called, September 1969. You can see the driver. I think these drivers, um, they wore white caps, as you can see in this view that Tom has captured. Of course, the Limerick check cabin, that was only recently decommissioned uh, following the recycling scheme uh, in Limerick station. This is Limerick Station itself, C225 and B159 is evident also, September 1969. I think C225 was uh, the pilot engine on this particular day that Tom visited Limerick. We're going to go up the Western Rail Corridor, so we're just back at Ennis Junction, and we have B128 working in Limerick to Ballina service, October 1966. The up and down line from Kilonan Junction, or laterally Limerick Junction, are on the left. And this is Ennis, B153, Ballina Limerick service, March 1975. And this is Crockwell B170, again Limerick bound, April 1976. I think this may have been taken on the last day of regular passenger services uh, up the Western Rail Corridor. 
course, the line between uh, Ennis and Attenry that was restate, reinstated in 2010. This is Attenry B124 Limerick Ballina service, September 1969. And Attenry is one of these places that hasn't really changed all that much. And this view from April 2010 was taken during the IRS Mark III farewell tour, which again was taken not long after the reinstatement of the line of passenger services between Ennis and Attenry. This is Ballygloonan or aka uh, Castletown as it was known uh, in The Quiet Man, B127, Limerick Balna service, September 1966. Uh, you'll also notice that the B127 had that minor modification of a red painted buffer beam. Uh, this was done by uh, Grand Canal Street Depot as part of a spruce up for uh, a Wexford Opera special in 1962. I think B123 um, also got the same treatment with the with the red buffer beam. And there's Ballygloonan, uh, which again I recorded. Castletown, as, as we know from The Quiet Man, 14 July uh, 2018. I think the station um, has since been restored um, as part of a community initiative and the goods shed nowadays serves as a, a local theatre. Now we're in North of Clare Morris and this is uh, Tom has captured this lovely scene of the staff exchange between the driver and the signalman at Kiltamock. B145 Sligo Clare Morris goods, October 1975. And you could almost think if the rails just weren't too rusty, that a train could appear at Kiltamock any day. Uh, this view, 12th 12 July 2018. Because regular uh, goods services ceased over the line in 1975, CIE A55, Claremorris Sligo Goods. This was working uh, that had a carriage attached to the to the daily goods for uh, the, the IRS, 15 to June 1968. This view again, captured at Swinford. Again, Swinford again, this time back to October 1975. Sligo Claremorris goods, B145. And um, my view uh, just coincidentally is similar to Tom's. Uh, I recorded this in June 2006 and uh, they had done a vegetation clearance um, on the track uh, which allowed uh, the station site to be recorded with the buildings and signal cabin and the, and the track but it's since become um, overgrown uh, again in large parts and when I've revisited this location uh, a couple of years ago, I wasn't able actually to get this particular shot. It was just it was just too overgrown. And uh, back to October 1975, this is the Claremont Sligo Goods with B171. And 171, that was the last 141 class engine to remain in service on Irish railways. In the background, you can see uh, B, the other engine that we saw, um, what was it? B145, yeah, that's B145 in the background. Here's B145 again, this time at Charlestown. So you can see Tom was obviously following this train uh, down the WRC or the Burma Road as a specific uh, section line is colloquially known. A55, again, 15th of June, 1968. That's that goes train with the, the carriage attached for the IRS. In my view, June 2006, unfortunately, the station buildings at Charlestown are, are, were demolished, I think, in the early 1980s, uh, but the platform um, still survives. And this is Tubber Curry. And um, now there has been major alterations here because uh, a bypass road that was built more or less to the left of where Tom took this picture that took out the goods yard, goods shed, and station building. So my view, as you can see here, has the road on the left, but the, the track is still there, the water tower is still there, and indeed the platforms. And my view is dated July 2019. We're going to bring you back to Limerick, and this time we're going to go over now the North Kerry. And we have B122, when 123 had uh, been turned on the turntable 
just across the way from Limerick Works, September 1966. In the background, there are uh, three brake vans, a CIE uh, 30 ton brake van, I think it is, and two X Great Northern brake vans. Uh, Limerick Check sees uh, two CIE shunters, the Maybach 428 and Deutsch engine G603, July 1963. And we know it's July 1963 because there is an entry in that that uh, month's issue of Ray Irish Rail Fans News that records these two engines as, as being transferred to Limerick uh, for shunting duties in particular. For shunting wagons in and out of Limerick Works and the Kerry's Road Goods Yard, which we see here. So this is Kerry's Road Goods Yard in Limerick. C217 and A55 are in this June 1965 view that Tom has captured. A55 is shunting cement bubbles on some vans and C217, I think, has worked a goods in off the Limerick Junction direction. This is Kerry's Road again, just uh, on the, just exiting the yard nearly, uh, heading in the Foynes direction, C211 and A4, July 1966. And the footbridge you can see, that survived for, for many years. It's gone now, but you used to get a great view of Kerry's Road uh, from, from that footbridge. This was taken um, before the second line to Castle Munger Cement Works uh, was open. So although the cement works um, was connected in the 1950s, it was still as a set worked as a separate branch from a place called Cement Branch Junction. But the line in which you see two, C211, that was extended out to the junction point uh, to relieve uh, the congested single track section, because at this time in the 1960s, there is a lot of bulk trains heading into Foynes and that included the zinc traffic from silver mines and the varieties or traffic as well as oil trains. This is Patrick's Well and uh, one of the intermediate stations between Limerick and Ballingran. B175 is heading an IRS North Kerry special. C231 to now preserve C-Class, which is preserved by the Irish Traction Group. That's been put into the um, the Croom line. I think though it's not working to Croom, it's just simply put into the Croom line to be overtaken by the IRS special. Uh, goods workings over the Croom line tended to happen um, at night. B175, Again, with the IRS special and the signal man handing up the ETS to Ballin Grand Junction, again, 25th of June 1966. And to the right of the picture, you can see some of the new uh, relayed sidings that were put in to, for the bulk traffic, for the bulk uh, traffic from silver mines. Of course, Boynes has been in the news uh, quite lately with the recent announcement um, of its rebuilding uh, to the, uh, for freight traffic. So maybe someday we'll see trains at this location again. My view um, was from August 2002 show, showing the station uh, train shed at Foynes. It's since gone into a bit of a, uh, a state of disrepair. But again, maybe we'll see that restored um, in years ahead. And this is just outside Foynes at a place called uh, Barry Gone. Uh, CIE A1 working at Foynes to Silver Mines Empty Varieties train, uh, September 1966. At this early period of the varieties traffic, uh, the actual dedicated wagons with the drop size, they hadn't entered traffic at this point. They were just using the, the usual CIE open wagons. Now we're on the North Kerry proper. This is North Ratkeel, B109, working the goods train from Newcastle West, August 1969. When the North Kerry line was lifted in 1988-89, this section of the track bed uh, became a bypass for Ratkeel Village, but the goods shed and station building still exists. And the building um, is actually nowadays uh, turned completely at right angles um, facing away from the line but um, it now serves as a heritage centre uh, for the Palatine um, community who once settled in this area of Limerick. Ratkeel B147, um, I'm probably exaggerating saying that this is a North Kerry liner train. It's taken some time I think before 1974 B147 shunting uh, 20 foot uh, 
in CIE insulated uh, containers in the goods yard at Ratkeel. I think meat traffic uh, was handled at this uh, at this station, and uh, just one of the few workings that had container traffic um, on the North Kerry line. Newcastle West B108, again, North Kerry goes August 1969. Newcastle West Station in the background, but we get a clear view of Newcastle West Station, this time with A48 or. Of course, Newcastle West was a kind of like a semi terminus where trains had to run in into the terminus, run round uh, before proceeding either east or west to Limerick or towards the Stole or Tralee. Abbey Field, B101, North Kerry goes from the Stole, again, taken around August 1969. And this is Listole, B102, working the goods from the Limerick direction, July 1969. Um, and later years, it was nearly always A classes. So this is A7, September 1971, with the goods from Limerick. Nowadays, uh, Listowel Station is now a heritage centre for the Lartigue uh, narrow gauge line. And this is Lixna, CIE A10R, with the goods from Tralee, September 1974. Um, it, in not too long after, I suppose, actually, it just uh, four years later, actually, in December 1978, this engine actually was wrecked in an accident, uh, a fatal accident, actually, at Lisburn as O10. So pictures of it, in particular, this one of Tom uh, captured um, as A10 or um, aren't too common. A16 or it's time, North Kerry Goods, April 1971, and it's passing through Abbey Dorney. A16 again, this time passing Artfurt, April 1971. And my view at Artfurt shows the station is uh, still relatively intact, single platform as it was on most stations on the North Kerry system. At the one I took this particular picture, the station was um, under refurbishment. And in fact, a lot of them have been tastefully restored uh, into private residences. And in some part, they've actually been accommodated with uh, the, the Great Southern Trail uh, Greenway or Limerick Greenway, as it's uh, nowadays known as. Beanut, B169, went on a summer excursion train from Tralee, though it may have worked all the way from Mallow, I'm not too sure, August 1969. Again, this is another location, actually, that's since uh, been converted uh, into a hub uh, for a greenway. Uh, it was only opened, actually, three months ago. Um, B162, that should be, actually, in the, in the text. Again, passing... Kilfenora, which was one of the intermediate stations on the Fina branch, August 1969. And this is Castle Island. So we've moved slightly off the North Kerry to the Kerry Road on the southern section uh, between uh, Mallow and Tralee. This is the goods from Tralee, May 1971, A28 or. Um, a few years earlier, September 1969, it was a Crossley Engine C class, doing as they did best, but, uh, all smoke and exhaust smoke billowing into the air, as Tom had captured in this shot, the 1215 uh, Tralee goods. And here we see the goods train joining the main line at Gorta Clay. Again, 1215 goods to Tralee. And this view a few years later, also at Gorta Clay, shows the position of the junction of the Castle Island branch with the with the uh, Mallow Tralee line. We have B171 working the passenger train from Mallow. And heading into Killarney now, A1. We've seen an awful lot of A1. Remember, we saw it all the way back in Drogheda. We saw it leaving Foynes, but now it's working the goods train from Tralee to Mallow. June 1965, and it's coming off the, the, the embankment there with Killarney Station was just out of sight to the left. And this is looking the opposite direction, B122, Dublin Tralee train, June 1965, with Killarney signal cabin in the background. And again, it's one of those gas tank wagons is also visible. I think that was one of the regularly used to top up the, the kitchen cars on the radio train which Tom has actually captured, actually the radio train itself. Uh, again, June 1965 in Killarney, 
B120, 122 and B128 with the complete with the radio train headboard. This is one actually the few scenes appropriate enough in Killarney that actually captures myself. Now you'll see a picture of Tom later on in the show on the Mallow uh, Waterford line. Uh, but again, this as marking 20 years of my own photography. This view actually is one of the rare pictures that actually shows me do, doing a bit of photography or videoing as it was back August 2002. Uh, and that's my view of the Mallow Tralee passenger train with 156 reversing out of the terminus at Killarney before heading west tr to Tralee. Uh, onwards now to Cork, we have B152 and one B189. And actually, that's actually one of the things that probably I feel fortunate enough to have been around to see and, and record the 141 class or the baby GMs, because it certainly gives a kind of a link between my pictures and, and Tom's ones here. And it just shows you the, the, the years of service that CIE got out of the GM diesels. Um, so many of them survived in traffic uh, until about 20, 2010, I think it was. So this view is Glanmire Road, March 1967. And this view is from July 2013 of our own uh, IRS rail tour uh, to Middleton. I think this scene now has also changed more recently in that there's a brand new hotel just out of sight to the right, uh, as well as a brand new entrance uh, onto Horgan's Quay. Um, it hadn't been constructed at this particular time. Uh, back to June 1965, this is B128, which you saw earlier at Killarney. It's arrived into Cork uh, with a train from Dublin. And this is the loco shed at Glanmire Road or Cork Shed at Kent Station, B186, B152, B146. That's the engine that's preserved at Downpatrick by the Irish Traction Group, B181, and Maybach Shunter E422, which is just hiding behind a couple of the GMs. And we're just going to pay a brief homage to the former West Cork system of the Cork Band and the South Coast Railway. And this is Alfred Street in Cork City. CIE C218, September 1967, and it's on its way to the former West Cork terminus at Albert Quay. And uh, it's been held up, you see, by this uh, uh, pork and bacon van. Now, to, to make it that van, maybe again, someone can help with that. But when I Googled similar vans, it kept on coming up as an American Chevrolet, in fact, a P10 van, but I could com be completely wrong by that. But maybe someone might have the answer. I assume the van uh, driver is probably promptly getting out of the way to allow C218 to proceed. And here we are making our way down Clontarf Street in Cork City. Um, in these views, I think we can see a Morris Minor on the left and a Ford Anglia on the right. And here we see Albert Key Terminus itself. Uh, it had been closed to passenger traffic uh, since 1961. Uh, 2 and 8 had come all the way over from Glanmire Road to pick up that um, solitary uh, bitumen tank that was used by Cork County Council. It was in this view, you get a nice view that Tom has recorded of, of um, the former signal cabin, the elevated signal cabin at Albert Key. But I'm afraid it didn't last too long after this. I think it was, um, demol it was demolished um, in December 1967. Now, if you look at my view of this scene, um, take a look at the houses to the left uh, above uh, C218. And this will kind of give you an idea of what Albert Key Yard looks like nowadays. Um, it's used as a primary road uh, leading out the south of uh, Cork City. So it's completely changed and most most of the track bed of the former West Cork line heading out into the suburbs um, of Cork have been built over uh, by this road. Um, now a busy scene at Yaw, so where we've moved from kind of West Cork metals to East Cork. Here we have CIE A1 again, A22 and B107. And these are worked um, summer excursion trains from Cork City, July 1964. Um, my view of y'all, August 2005, um, the track still existed, but you can see it's quite overgrown and the signal cabin and station 
um, have been boarded up. Um, again, it's in this year in particular, saw the station um, clear the vegetation again in pre preparation for a conversion into a greenway, uh, which will be installed between Middleton and Yall. Uh, but back to June 1968, this is a single 121 heading a Cork summer excursion B130. And here we have B160, again, another summer excursion train, this time Thomas captured at Middleton, June 1968. And of course, uh, for many years, the Middleton uh, section was out of use, but that was reinstated in 2009. Uh, in 2005, I recorded this view of Middleton, showing the overgrown um, track platforms and the derelict station buildings. And then probably more recently, November 2019, uh, I recorded this view of um, one of the commuter services uh, from Cork, uh, 2600 class railcar 2615. So this thing, it's good to see uh, the reinstatement um, again of lines like this. Um, B160 again, same train that Tom had recorded, this time at Carrick Tuhill, again June 1968. And then my view, in 2007, captures uh, Carrick Tootle again. Just, uh, just the line had just been cleared of vegetation again in preparation for its rebuilding. Nowadays, the Carrick Tootle station is actually located on this particular side of the bridge of, uh, that I recorded. Uh, the section there with the, the old booking office and platform uh, that's no longer used. And this is Killer. And uh, this was taken later years on the Middleton branch, the goods working uh, from Yaw, May 1978, 1300 goods train uh, to Cork. Uh, my view shows, unfortunately, the deterioration of Killer Signal Cabin. And uh, again, the although the track still exists, it's heavily overgrown. But again, it's it's been cleared and um, again in preparation for um, uh, the greenway that's been installed between Middleton and Yaw. And now we're going to focus attention on the Mallow, former Mallow Waterford line, which closed in March 1967. This is B122, and it's an interesting uh, view uh, taken from the footbridge at the north end of Mallow Station and shows a Ross Lair at uh, the Cork boat train coming off the Mallow Waterford line. Again, it's not, I've seen images taken from ground level, but I haven't seen a picture taken. Um, from the footbridge. Now the footbridge was covered, so I think maybe Tom might have been pointing his camera to 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 the windows of the footbridge, but um he managed to capture this. It's a really nice view showing the original layout at the north end of Mallow Station. Um Castletown Roach, I think that's one of the first of a couple of intermediate stations on the Mallow Waterford line. B124, working from Cork to Rosslare, June 1966. Um, I have a view, similar view of Castletown Roach, July 2009, showing the single platform and the signal cabin and station building um, still exists. Um, I think it's used by um, a local cooperative uh, society now. Uh, next station up is Ballyhooley, CIE A27, which we saw, uh, remember we saw that at Cholester at the beginning of the show. Um, this is how it's working to 1330 Cork to Waterford Daily Stopper, and it's passing AEC Railcar 2634. That was working the IRS rail tour from Dublin to Waterford and across to Mallow, 16th of November 1963. Again, it's a nice capture. You can see the, the, the oil lamps on the platform were receiving attention on this particular evening. You'll also notice that the platform uh, on the left there is a concrete platform that was installed in about 1906 at the same time as the the, the opening of the Rosslare Harbour uh, Waterford line for boat traffic. So that saw an increase in capacity on the Mallow Waterford line. So where in certain places, the Great Southern and Western actually installed passing places and put in an extra platform, as you can see here at Ballyhooley. Um, that's my view, roughly the same same angle, 18 July uh, 2009. Uh, Ballyhooley is now a private house and the, where the platform is still visible, but um, the, where the track is is now at the back garden of the house. 
And this is for Moy. B131, Ross Lair to Cork service, March 1967. Just taken shortly before the passenger services over the Mallow Waterford line ceased. In the background, you can see the signal cabin and the bay platform that was formerly used uh, by branch trains on the Mitchellstown branch until about 1947. This is the east end of Formoy Station, class leader B121, working Cork to Rosslare, July 1966, so the last summer in which the, the, the passenger trains were working over the Mallow Waterford line. Um, my view shows that the train shed still exists, uh, but again, it's now become a private business. Clon Dulan, wayside station between uh, Fermoy and Lismore. Waterford to Mallow goes train March 1967 on a much uh, better day compared to the previous day, March that Tom recorded. And this is Bally Duff. B121 again, Cork to Rosslare, July 1966. And the station here still survives as a guest house. And it's very popular, I believe, with anglers uh, who fish along the um, the River Blackwater, because this is in the Blackwater River Valley. This is Tallow Road, B124, Mallow to Waterford Goods, July 1966. And this is station, again, it's wonderfully preserved now. Um, it's an interesting sort of... Um, it has a few extensions uh, added to it, like a second story to the east end. But as you can see, the small good shed also uh, still survives. Um, an excellent restoration. That, my view, is from July 2009. This is Lismore. Now, I mentioned, uh, should be spelled Lismore, sorry for the typo. But uh, yeah, this is the um, the AEC rail car uh, with the IRS special, 16th of November 1963. So this was the train that Tom had captured crossing at Ballyhooley. Now this uh, this station is, um, has a lot of architectural merit and um, was built, I think, to the style uh, was for the, I think it was the Duke of Devonshire who um, was re resident um, in Lismore. And originally the station had an overall roof until the late 1930s. So that's my view in July 2009. Uh, back to May 1965, though, this time we have a Solzer engine B107 working a Rosslare bound train. Uh, that's Lismore signal cabin in the background. And as I mentioned previously, there was actually a train shed um, spanning the, the, the platform area. Uh, Lismore, we saw this train again, it's B121, July 1966. And here's my similar view. So this, the, the, the station is still, still large, largely intact. And this is Dungarvan, B1, I think it's actually 124, it's either 124 or 126, Cork Ross Lair train, AEC Railcar 2609. So that's a different special compared to the earlier one in 1963. This was 17th of March, 1966, and crossing at Dungarvan. And to the left there, you can see the two camping carriages uh, that were put in. Uh, into that bay platform at Dungarvan, I think in the late 50s, early 60s. There are similar carriages um, located at Killarney uh, and Tremor as well. This is January 1968. So this is after passenger and goods services had ceased on the Mallow Waterford line. This is G601, which was engaged in track lifting duties. Uh, the oil tank you can see in the background, that was delivered uh, monthly to Dungarvan to top up the, the fuel in the Deutz engine. And this is the wide level crossing. I mentioned, I made reference to this level crossing uh, in the Riley's Bridge picture but, uh, here. So here we see it itself. So this is the causeway at Dungarvan, Waterford and Mallow Goods, B131, on a miserable day, March 1967. Uh, B124, Cork to Ross Air Train, pictured by Tom at Kilmac Thomas, July 1966. And here we see uh, Davy Boyle and Tom Dowland himself, this time at Kilmac Thomas again, March 1967, with B131 with, a, with the Mallow, with the Waterford Mallow Goods. 
And here we see B131, this time at Duro Station. And I too also have a very similar coincidental picture taken from the same angle showing Duro. 7th of January 2017, uh, showing the, the station building and signal cabin, which I think there are plans to restore uh, both those structures. Uh, similar to station building, Kilmac Thomas has definitely uh, been restored. You can see here, this was taken not long after the the Greenway had been installed on the Mallow, on the section between Dungarvan and Waterford. And this is Waterford itself, CIEB 106, entering Waterford Station January 1968 with a long train of cattle vans. And um, he may have been working out to the Clover um, meat factory siding, uh, which was on the Rosslare line, uh, just on the east side of Waterford City. And um, just a brief reference to the buses again. This is the CIE uh, AA1. I think these AA buses were much larger uh, or had larger capacity, greater capacity uh, compared to other buses in the Dublin area. And these ones were based down in Waterford for working at uh, the Waterford City Tremor service. And Tom captured this view of one of those buses, AA1, outside the station in July 1966. Um, this is in Sally Park Yard in Waterford, A32, January 1968, just by the turntable. Um, still, this is also more or less known as Waterford West Yard. I just included this picture of A32 because um, I find that the, for a short period, the engine seemed to have these round uh, buffers uh, installed, as you can see, Tom is captured in this shot. And uh, I can't think of other A-classes that had round buffers like this. Certainly the ones at the other end of the engine are the normal oval design. So I don't know whether A32 was unique in having round buffers for a time. Uh, so it certainly is some one oddity in, in, these, in, in this collection of Tom's that I discovered. Um, heading along the South Wexford line, this is Value Clan B162, Rosslare Waterford Goods, February 1970, a classic uh, South Wexford station, island platform, footbridge, corrugated iron station building, and good shed. And there's not really an awful lot left of the buildings at like Value Clan, in fact, only the single platform. This view taken after passenger services had ceased on the South Wexford line in 2010. This view, three years after that date, uh, the weed sprayer working from Rosslare to Waterford with 071 class 071. You may recall we saw that earlier, this engine at the beginning of the slideshow um, on the Navin branch, but it was painted in its retro livery from 1976. This is Campile, AEC Railcar 2626, February 1970 heading towards Rosslare Harbour with a tin van attached at the end of the set. And this is Killinick. Uh, a CIE, I think it's B121, is the engine that's on the right and it's crossing an AEC railcar 2633 at uh, July 1966. And um, you'll see that the, this particular AEC railcar power car had the exhaust port and um, it's like one of the vertical um, ones uh, just by the cab side and um, similar uh, view i think it's probably taken on the same evening and um, this time it's it's an unidentified 121 class so i don't know why b121 on the right seemed to be held uh, for two uh, water bound trains and um, you can see the staff uh, snatcher was in use on the waterford bound train. You can see the arm of it uh, sticking out, as indeed you can see the arm sticking out of the cab side as well. And this is Rosslare Harbour itself, B110, uh, having about to depart on a Rosslare Cork Express, get July 1966. And this part of the original terminus at Rosslare Harbour, that closed in 1989. But now it's since been cut back all the way to Ballygiri now. This is Wexford South Station, CIE AC Railcar 2630, working at Dublin Rosslare service, June 1965. I think Wexford South, that closed in March 1977 and barely a trace of it um, exists now. Uh, Tom had captured, um, I think, the same the same railcar set, but this time at the north end of Wexford Town, heading on to the quayside. 
So Wexford Station, the main one, is out of sight behind the rail car. Um, this was a weed sprayer taken roughly in the same sort of angle as Tom's picture, 079 weed sprayer from Wexford to Waterford, 20th of April, 2011. So this was one, this was working one year after uh, South Wexford passenger services had ceased. Um, now, this train, I had captured this train the previous day on the north wall to Wexford leg and it's passing Ferry Carrick, 19th of April 2011, 071 class 079. And again, just coincidentally, Tom had this picture B170 passing Ferry Carrick on a north wall to Wexford goods train, again, February 1970. Uh, you can see B170 has now arrived into Wexford Station, sometimes known as Wexford North to distinguish it from Wexford South Station. I'm not too sure that the goods, um, the open wagons with the tarpaulins, they may have come, uh, they may be laden with fertilizer, which had come from Shelton Abbey. Uh, B134 um, seems to be stabled in the siding there on a passenger working from Dublin. Uh, this may have been a, a number of specials in Wexford. I don't think it was the opera specials, though, because that normally happened in October. So I think the day for this might be June 1964. We have two um, passenger trains here, three GMs and a BUT railcar set um, in the siding. Um, heading up on our last leg of our journey of tonight's show, this is McMine Junction. B122 with the goods from Wexford, uh, January 1966. At this point, of course, passenger services uh, on the line to Waterford via New Ross had ceased in 1963. Um, so McMine Junction had ceased to function as an interchange point, but you can still see the track on the Palace East line there to the, to the right. And um, this was taken just before the line was lifted completely. Uh, and Escorty, we saw this train again, B-170 with those goods, February 1970, crossing the River Slaney south of Enniscorty Station. And also at Enniscorty, crossing the Slaney, 071 Class 073, working at Rail Tours Ireland, Emerald Isle Express, 10th of June 2018. And this is not too often recorded station of Ferns. Again, same goods train that Tom recorded in February 1970. You can see that there is a um, what's known as a, I think a PAL van is behind B170. So obviously that was dropped off, I think probably um, at Ferns station, because we know it wasn't on the train uh, when it got into Wexford. And a classic uh, Dublin Southeastern signal cabin attached to the footbridge. Uh, heading nearer to Dublin now, here we have, this is Greystones, uh, 260 number 462, with the goods from Wicklow, April 1962. And again, I mentioned at the beginning of the show, uh, the uh, the ash pan ejectors, you can see them protruding uh, on a slanted down from the smoke box. I don't think sister engine 461 didn't have um, that particular feature. I don't think they were used at this particular uh, time that that ash pan ejector because I believe they they were responsible for some engines uh, engine shed uh, fires because some of the hot cinders got stuck in the tubes uh, and then they the the ground beneath the engine would uh, catch a light. Uh, Glenagiri, a suburban train uh, from Dublin J fifteen O six O number one o one with a Bray service August nineteen fifty nine. Train made up of Great Southern and Western and CIE Park Royal stock, as well as a four wheel tin van. And Tom also captured this view at Dunleary Pier, uh, one of the ex Dublin Southeastern F2 class engines, uh, 242 tank number 433, April 1955. Yeah, a Great Southern and Western uh, six wheel brake carriage, and right next to it is a brand new Park Royal carriage. Uh, this is Dunleary Station proper. Here we have J4060 number 261, working a boat train, February 1959. And then in diesel days, Tom recorded, I think it was the same boat train service, but with Sulzer engine B110.
And this is Salt Hill, an up train to Dublin, hauled by A43, and impersonating a steam train with that exhaust smoke from its Crossley engine, June 1965. And Westland Row, or aka Pier Station, which is a preserved C231 and A19, April 1964. Uh, the station, actually, of course, the roof has gone under extensive refurbishment now. Uh, so although back when Tom captured this view in the 60s, it looks quite dark. Nowadays, you can actually get a much brighter sort of picture. And uh, now that the station has been totally reglazed and it's quite, uh, the restoration is quite, quite superb, actually, on it. And now we're back in Amiens Street. Uh, where we started our uh, this journey tonight. So we have J15 060 number 200, May 1959, working it down suburban train. The structure you just see on the left, that, that's the base of the original Amien Street South signal cabin, which closed in the mid 1930s when the Great Southern Railways uh, resignaled uh, the station with color light signals. And um, Tom also captured this lovely view of D4 class 440 number 346 being turned on the turntable at the southeastern side of Amien Street Station, May 1959. And I noticed it's just a small little detail uh, in this picture, as well as the either the fireman or the driver who's posing uh, just, just by the cab side. But you can see Tom's uh, camera uh, holder or just there just there on the wall so he's standing on the wall quite a it would put a big drop actually down from that particular point uh if anyone's familiar with that part of Connolly station but you can see um his camera holder there on the wall and um, that's just my view it's a different angle of the turntable on the southeastern side of Amy Street or Dublin Connolly as it's known nowadays uh, inspection car is 721 uh, which is also known as Jess and the track recording car, which dates from 1976, I think it's one of the oldest uh, of its type still, still in use, EM50 or number 700, 23rd of May 2008. Uh, since this pitch was taken, the, the turntable road has actually been disconnected, so you can't see anything stable nowadays at the turntable in Connolly at this, on this particular one. Uh, but back to May 1959, we have a Great Southern Railways tank engine, 062 tank number 673. And again, lovely capture by Tom. You can see it's being admired by uh, two young boys on the platform as well. And now we have steam versus, uh, well, not steam, certainly not. Although the train, you, the carriage you see on the left, that's where not the J15 number 200, uh, which we saw just moments ago, uh, was. Uh, but now we have uh, diesel traction in the form of AC Railcar 2633 and A8, uh, May 1959. You can see the two drivers are having a natter between themselves. I do wonder, though, with the sound of the, the A class, uh, must have been, as many people will testify, must have been quite deafening. So I wonder, can, can the driver of the rail car make out what he's saying? Uh, they would have been working, um, I don't know, they, or it might actually be the guard, actually, that he's talking to, if that's a northbound, uh, had, it, had that rail car set. And maybe A8 is working to Ross Lair. Again, I don't have the details, but again, it's a lovely shot that Tom captured. And here we have one of the last few images that we'll show tonight, B135. We saw this uh, earlier in the show, but taken from a different angle, but this taken from the true suburban platforms. Again, I mentioned that was one of the B121 classes that had uh, been repainted in the original grey and, and yellow livery. You see, I think that's a four-wheel TPO behind the engine, followed by um, a park wall carriage, July 1964. <laughs> And if I may mention just before the end of the show, my view, actually 74, I completely forgot I put this picture in, but that's the same view roughly at the end of the north end of Connolly Station, the RPSI Marble City Rail Tour arriving into Dublin from Kilkenny, 21st of August 2022. And I may, what I was going to mention was about Tom's film show. So um, although this is his slideshow, I encourage anyone who hasn't seen Tom's films and um, actually go and look at the, the particular show, uh, film show that I presented of Tom's material 
in 2021 and you'll find that on the irs youtube channel because it's uh, it's just as equally i think as interesting as the still images and um, that he recorded so um this particular slide brings a close to tonight's presentation and um, again i hope uh you all enjoyed the images and it's just something worth uh, i want to mention is just how valuable it is to be recording uh, the railway system because say what Tom was recording back all those years ago in the 50s, 60s and 70s were everyday workings. And as you can see, having no knowledge of Tom when I started taking pictures, it's interesting to compare and contrast how the railway system has changed. So it just shows you the value of that keeping up that interest and hobby uh, rec recording Irish railways. And um, I also want to mention Tom's family who uh, generously donated his uh, film collection and still pictures. And uh, unfortunately, towards the end of Tom's life, he wasn't a frequent visitor down to the IRS premises in, in, in Dublin, Euston. Uh, but fortunately, myself and my friend Colm O'Callaghan in the Society, we managed to relink with Tom and he was able to reminisce about many of the scenes that you've seen here tonight. And again, uh, he was thrilled uh, just to even meet and speak and to talk about his experience of photographing those trains all those years ago. And again, so I want to express my thanks to Tom's family for the generous donation to the society. So I'll hand you back over to you, Shane, and I'll stop sharing my screen as well. There we go. And I'll switch the video on. <laughs> to look like yeah absolutely fantastic presentation as always and um, just looking at all the comments coming in there in the last while and um, some very favorite ones so i think everybody enjoyed it uh, i certainly did and um and again karen thanks for stepping in a short notice we were of course meant to have a different presentation tonight and mm -hmm. um, we had to alter the schedule there only about four or five weeks ago um, which I forgot to mention at the start, but um, thank you for stepping up at such short notice with it. such a fantastic presentation. Um, and last but not least, I want to thank all, all the members who joined and visitors tonight and hopefully really, really enjoyed tonight's presentation. And as this is the last um, presentation from the Dublin um, body of the IRS, which takes this opportunity to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year. And we'll see you all in, in, in January.